Disney stocks to watch out are down more than 50%. That's what we're talking about here today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. I'm going to share with you three companies that are actually some pretty good companies, okay? And their stocks have been absolutely hammered. We're talking about over a 50% drop in the past 12 months, okay? These three stocks have been absolutely obliterated. And we got to kind of talk about these stocks because sometimes you can find some diamonds in the rough in these situations when you find these stocks that some of these stocks are down you know 60 percent 70 percent and sometimes some of these stocks don't deserve to be hit that much and some of them are great companies that you can potentially make a lot of money in so we're going to discuss these three today i hope you guys enjoy this as always okay let's start getting into this one the first one up of the bunch is a company named align technology ticker symbol a l g n all right a l g n align technology is a stock that's about 175 dollars a share right now and this is a stock that in the past 52 weeks weeks, it hit nearly $400 a share at its peak, okay? $398.88 to be exact, okay? So which means this stock has fallen over 50% from its 52 week high. Now this is the biggest company of the bunch that we're going to talk about here today. Market cap of this one over $14 billion, so no small company, okay? Align Technology is a global medical device company that changes lives through better smiles. We reimagine and reinvent the way orthodontic and restore Restorative treatment is presented and delivered to millions of people around the world through our network of Invisalign trained doctors, okay? So if you ever heard of Invisalign or you know, you've had a family member or a friend that have had that product, they're basically the creator of that product, okay? And they also own the product that kind of does all the scanning and those sorts of things, okay? This is a company that did $2.2 billion in net revenues, okay? They have 7.2 million patients, all right? That's quite a few, 950 two patents and uh, you know approaching 14,000 employees. Now recently they just announced they're going to do a 200 million dollar accelerated stock repurchase. Now I would assume they're doing this because the stock has dropped so much. Remember we just talked about the fact that this stock is down over 50 percent from its 52 week high. So sometimes in those situations a company will look at this and they're like our stock is a great deal now we need to go ahead and buy some shares off the market. So sometimes it makes sense to do an accelerated share buyback. Once again, $200 million. Now also, Joe Hogan, okay, no relation to Hulk Hogan, okay, so you guys that were hoping that. Joe Hogan, he's the president and CEO of the company, and he intends to personally purchase $1 million worth of Align's common stock. Usually a pretty good sign whenever, you know, a high-ranking executive, a CEO of the company, is basically, you know, putting their money behind what they believe in, and if they believe in that company, put some money behind it, okay? So that is important. Now, if you're wondering who are their two, like, main competitors, well, one is is their, their main competitor is just like traditional braces. Now, obviously these have a massive, massive competitive advantage over traditional braces because traditional braces like are just not good to look at. Like, let's be completely honest. Like traditional braces are just like, like no one really wants traditional braces, right? But if you can have braces and if you have, you know, crooked teeth or whatever, and you want to have that like, perfect smile, you can go ahead and do it through something like this, which is clear. And you basically don't have to have those metal bars all along your teeth and whatnot. Okay, so it's a pretty cool product, but that's one of their main competitors. And their other main competitor is a company named Smile Direct Club. All right, you've probably seen commercials for this. And basically, their business model is going straight to the consumer. Okay, and their prices are pretty cheap. Well, you were talking under two thousand dollars or eighty-five dollars a month for their product versus like traditional braces, which obviously, you know, no one wants traditional braces, but I mean, traditional braces are usually six to $8,000. So they have two main competitors. One is traditional braces, which I believe over time will be completely phased out. And if we're looking 20 or 30 years into the future, I don't see anybody having traditional braces. Like I just don't see anybody wanting traditional braces unless they absolutely have to have them for some weird reason. Like I don't see anybody like going out of their way to get traditional braces. So obviously, Obviously, clear braces are the way of the future, and you kind of have two main competitors. You have this company, Align Technology with Invisalign, and you have the Smile Direct Club, okay? Now, who will win long term is, a, is you know, it's, we're gonna have to see, but needless to say, those are the two main dogs in this fight, all right? Now, this company has seen their, their revenues just increase and increase and increase in a very nice way. You look at 2016, they do a little over a billion dollars. Then they do 1.4 billion in 2017. They do almost $2 billion in revenue 
revenue this past year and look at the way that net income has climbed, okay? 189 million they did for net income in 2016, 231 million in 2017, and in 2018 they do over 400 million dollars in net income. So needless to say, like that is really, really exciting. However, over the past 12 months essentially, especially over the past nine months, they have had some earnings reports that have scared some investors being that this is a massive growth stock and some growth metrics weren't as strong as some people had hoped for. And you can obviously see that in the stock price. I mean, like we talked about, it was about 400 bucks a share. You go back 10, 11 months ago. Then in a matter of a few months, it drops all the way under $200 and actually under $180 for a very short amount of time. In that whole big stock market drop in December and January, January, right? Then it rises back really strong back on the 300s and then very recently it's dropped and you know basically fell off a cliff the last few months and uh, now we're at $175 on that stock. And so this has been one of those stocks that's just kind of caught up. Whenever you got these massive growth stocks that have huge growth and a lot of people excited around that stock and sometimes their reports aren't as good as expected, you get these massive, massive fluctuations in this stock, okay? That's just what happens with growth stocks. Now, also I will say the company is not necessarily cheap at the moment. Now they do have still a very strong growth, but it's not like it's necessarily a cheap stock. You look at the trailing P, 34, that's pretty rich, okay? Uh, forward P of 27, that's pretty high as well. So if I look at a line, it's very, very intriguing, okay? This is a great company that seems to be one of like two players, two main players in their space, right? It's them and it's Smile Direct Club. And so they got this massive market opportunity. The world will be theirs over time, but but obviously it's not necessarily a cheap stock as of right now. You know, a 27 plus forward P on the stock is not cheap. However, it's gotten much more intriguing than if you were to go back and try to buy this stock when it was $400. So it's definitely a stock I'm very interested in potentially buying. Also a great balance sheet on that company, great management team. It might be a stock I buy. I would just like it to fall a little lower. I mean, I mean if we get that forward P somewhere around 22, 23, then we're really talking for that one, okay? Stock number two up here is iRobot, okay? Ticker symbol I-R-B-T. iRobot, look at this one. It hit its 52-week low pretty much today, okay? Um, this stock was all the way up to $132 at its peak, meaning this stock has dropped well over 50% now from its 52-week peak. If you don't know iRobot, basically they have a, you know, a few different businesses, but their main business by far and away where they get the most of their revenues most of their profits from is the Roomba vacuum cleaners, okay? They have Roombas that, you know, basically start about 200 something dollars. They have ones that go all the way up to well over a thousand dollars. And uh, the Roomba vacuum cleaner, I'm pretty sure all you guys are familiar with that, basically goes around your house and just vacuums your floors, your carpets, hard floors, and things like that. And once again, they do have some other products they're coming out with, as well as they have like a floor mopping robot, but their main business is the Roomba vacuum cleaner at the end of the day. And it will continue to be their main business for a long, long, long time into the future, okay? Now, this is another one that was showing very, very nice growth, just like Align Technology. You look at this company, okay? 2016, they do $660 million in revenue. Then they do 883 in 2017. And then in 2018, they do nearly $1.1 billion in total revenue. So which means this was a very fast growing company. You look at those type of revenue numbers, extremely, extremely impressive. You look at the net income, Okay, they go from $41 million in net income in 2016, then they do over $50 million in 2017, and then nearly $88 million in net income in 2018. If you go down and look at EPS, $1.85 they did in 2017, all the way up to $3.18 in 2018. And so if you look at a stock like this, you're like, this is a massive growth beast. They're growing revenues very nicely. They're growing net income very impressively. And you can see why the stock was just going up and up and up like crazy right? And it hit over $130. But recently, the stock has fallen off a cliff. It's down more than 50%. And uh, go ahead and look at the trailing P and the forward P, and that's going to tell you most of the story. Trailing P on this one is, uh, you know, a little over 20, about 20 and a half. Forward P is about 19 and a half, which basically means they're hardly expected to grow profits at all this year. So it went from a very, very fast growing companies on revenues and net income to now very, very slight growth expected. It. And what's going to happen when that happens? A lot of the growth investors are going to flood out of that stock 
and uh, you're gonna get a massive drop, and that's what's happened with that stock price as we've seen there, okay? Now, uh, you know, pretty good management team and I, Robot, I followed this company for a long time. Uh, one time I did hold the shares for a little amount of time, you know, many, many years ago, and uh, they've always had a great balance sheet. $132 million in cash and cash equivalents, uh, nearly $24 million in short-term investments. They always also keep some long-term investments around. So very good company overall. They're going through, you know, the negativity around the trade war and tariffs. Uh, many of the Roombas are assembled in China. So obviously as they bring those out back over the states, they have these huge tariffs. That's not good for profitability. Do they pass that along to their customers? Do they raise prices and things like that? So it's not a good look for iRobot here in the short term. However, if you think about this, you know, I can definitely see a future when everybody in their home or apartment has a robotic vacuum cleaner. It doesn't necessarily mean it's an iRobot one, but it could be, you know, some Chinese knockoff brand. It could be one of the traditional players that makes a robotic vacuum cleaner. But, you know, if I'm looking into the future 10 years out, 15 years out, 20 years out, I definitely see a future where everybody has robotic vacuum cleaners in their house. And if they're the main player in the market, that's definitely a very, very good thing for the company overall. So it's definitely a stock I'm looking at and, and very, you know, seriously considering purchasing. Okay. Let's get into stock number three that has been absolutely hammered. This one's been hammered worse than both those. Okay. If you thought the other ones fell a lot, look at this one, US Steel. Okay. Ticker symbol X. Okay. This one has been absolutely decimated over the past 52 weeks. This stock was all the way up to $31 a share. And now it's like a 10 buck chuck stock. Okay. 10, $11 a share now. Uh, just absolutely fell off a cliff. If you don't know US Steel, basically they're a steel company. Okay. They got some factories obviously here in the United States, uh, one or two in Europe. And recently there's been some bad news for them essentially. Okay. Uh, they're going to idle their Indiana plant. That's going to cost about 150 jobs. Why are they idle in that? Well, basically they can't make money on selling the steel. So they're going to have to cut some jobs. Okay. And uh, they just announced very recently that their Great Lakes facility in Michigan would also cut about 200 workers. Okay. So that's obviously a very negative thing overall. You know, steel pricing just isn't there right now. And they're just not able to create the steel products they create um, for enough money. That's the bottom line at the end of the day. So they're going through a tough time right now at the company in a time where you think they wouldn't be going through a tough time, but they are going through a tough time. Okay. Now, if we look here, okay, so 2017, they do 11 and a half billion dollars in revenue. In 2016, the stock dropped, you know, into the single digits because their business was just going downhill. Okay. They did, uh, you know, $10 billion, $10.2 billion in 2016. So a big decrease there. But then starting in 2017, the business started to pick back up. Okay. They did over $12 billion. Then they did over $14 billion in revenue. You look at net income, it absolutely went off the charts. Okay. They went from losing about 1.5 billion to then losing 440 million to then making nearly a $400 million positive net income. And in this past year, they make a profit, a net income of $1.1 billion. Okay. So you look at that and that's unbelievably impressive. Okay. And so you see this business, you know, on the uptick and uptick and uptick and uptick. Okay. But at the end of the day, they are a commodity player. Okay. And I bought this stock, you know, back in 2018 at some point, And then I sold out when it was still in the twenties because I saw their business eroding and I didn't think it would get any better anytime soon. And sure enough, it has just gotten worse and worse and worse. Okay. And so I'm very happy we cut out of this one when we did, even though we had to take a loss, it was a very small loss compared to, Oh my gosh, if we had, you know, stayed in the stock. Uh, but needless to say, look at that trailing PE. Okay. You know, keep in mind for those of you who might be kind of newer to the stock market, anything under a 10 is a really, really low PE. This is under two. You'll almost never see a stock with a trailing PE of one something. Okay. 1.95. You will almost never see that. That is absolutely ridiculous. But you go look at that forward PE and it's at a 17. So which essentially means the company is expected to be hardly any profits coming in through the door compared to this past year, okay? And so something I learned with commodity stocks is one, I need to stay away from commodity stocks. They're usually, they're usually just not good stocks to be involved with as a long-term investor because they go through long, long periods of their business just being down and out, okay? But what I will say about commodity stocks, a US Steel for instance, is usually the, the best time to get involved with those stocks 
is when it is darkest, when it is the most negative, when there's the most negative commentary, when their numbers are the worst, okay? That's actually usually the time to buy these stocks. The opposite time to buy commodity-related stocks is when everything's grand and everything looks glorious with that business. And the reason being is commodity-related stocks, they, they tend to follow trends, okay? And they're, they're, things are either getting a lot better or a lot worse. And so for US Steel over the past several quarters, things have just gotten a lot, lot worse, okay? And so I'm not saying go buy US steel stock or a commodity stock just when it's down and out. But if you're looking at this, usually when it comes to commodity related businesses, the time to get involved with those businesses for the most part is when things are the most down and out and things are super negative. Because many times these businesses do come back and they do end up thriving over time, but they have to get to that place. And uh, the, the most money is usually made on those stocks when it's darkest. And uh, a lot of people tend to jump in commodity stocks when everything's you know, glorious and everything's going up a ton. And, you know, a lot of people flooding into the stock in 2017 and into 2018 when it was going from 30 to then 40 plus dollars. This stock, you know, topped out at nearly $50 a share a few years ago. And everybody's jumping in that stock, right? And that's usually the exact opposite time with commodities business because commodities, they don't just keep going up. You know, just when you think it's going to get even better, that's when it starts getting worse with commodity producers. It doesn't matter if you're talking about memory chip plays like an MU. It doesn't matter if you're talking about steel related stocks. It doesn't matter if you're talking about oil stocks, natural gas related stocks. It's just the way it is with those. You know, it doesn't keep going up forever. And next thing you know, uh, you know, pricing starts to decline. There's too much supply out there in the market. And uh, next thing you know, the stocks are absolutely decimated, guys. So, but anyways, let me know if you are buying any of these three stocks, if you're interested in buying any of these these three stocks, or if you're just going to add them to your watch list, I would love to hear from you guys in that comment section. As always, make sure you smash the thumbs up button. This video took quite a bit of time to put together for you guys, so uh, I definitely hope you appreciate it, all right? Thank you for watching, and have a great day.